What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, he actually had a vote on the floor of the Senate today. It was blocked by Republicans, but since that vote, we are actually getting more timelines. We're actually getting more information and this is all critical to seeing this infrastructure bill pass, which if you remember, the bipartisan infrastructure bill has to pass first and then we will see the roughly $3.5 trillion or possibly even higher by budget reconciliation bill, which will be a Democrat only bill. So let's get into the update for today because there's a lot of information that we need to cover. First, the IRS, they have stated that they sent out an additional 2.2 million stimulus checks just this week alone. Now, these stimulus checks are going out to people that are uh, you needing the plus up payment. So if you didn't get your full $1,200, $600, or your $1,400 stimulus checks, well, these payments are still going out. So yes, people are just now receiving their payments from the $1,200 stimulus check that we received over a year ago. Yes, that is how far behind the IRS currently is. But they are also stating that these, pe these people and these payments are actually going out because they are just now getting information on all of these people. So they're just now finding out where to send these payments and they're getting their payments out as quickly as possible. At least that is according to the IRS. Some of these payments are even returned. Uh, these or the return checks are still being sent out. We're also seeing some of these payments are just from missed payments. So if the IRS forgot about you for whatever reason, forgot about one of your children or, or anything like that, your dependents, they're sending out the check. So at least that's good news. So the good news here though, is that yes, the IRS is sending out the remainder of these checks. They're not gonna hold on to this money, but that does come with some bad news. And the bad news is the IRS has taken over four months to send out all of the stimulus checks from the $1,400 batch that came from the American Rescue Plan. The problem with this is they're not done. This is not the final payment. They're still sending out checks. Who knows how long these are gonna be going out, but here's the reason why this is bad news. First, yes, you, you need the money, right? The bigger issue is regarding the, the income tax returns for 2020. There are over 35 million income tax returns that are still waiting to be processed manually processed. That is an insane amount of, of returns to go through, especially right now when the IRS has a, a shortage of staff. So we will see what happens, but they are planning on getting all these done by the end of this summer. Well, we are about 40 days away from the end of summer, so it's not looking likely. Hopefully you guys have already received your uh, income tax refunds. If you haven't, let me know down in the comment section below. I'd be curious because I know right now there are millions of people just waiting for this money because they truly need it. They need to spend it. They need to pay their rent. They need to pay their cars. They need to put food on the table. They need this money. So let me know down in the comment section below if you have been one of the lucky few that have received your income tax refund check. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, just hoping that you are one of those people. Now, the vote to move forward with this debate from the infrastructure package, this was blocked today. And I want to really address this because I don't think a lot of people understand how important this is. If we do not see this $1.2 trillion infrastructure package move forward, then we are going to see that $3.5 trillion infrastructure package, that Democrat only budget reconciliation bill that has all of the additional you know, you know, assistance and relief for the American people. Well, that bill is on hold. Now, a Republican today, or actually a Democrat today, uh, wanted to see about pushing forward with a uh, budget reconciliation first and then do the bipartisan bill second, but a lot of people shot that down because that's not the way they wanna do this bill. They want to make sure the bipartisan bill gets done first, whatever is not included, gets put into the budget reconciliation. If Democrats are just gonna come out and do a budget reconciliation bill first, well, they might as well just put everything in there and forget about the bipartisan bill. So flipping the things around isn't gonna work, at least according to many moderates. But we will see, things could always change. But what we do know right now is Republicans said that 
they were just not ready to vote on this bill today, but they will be ready next week and most likely on Monday. So according to multiple reports, a vote could take place on Monday if and only if negotiators come to an agreement beforehand. And when I say beforehand, I'm not talking about Monday afternoon, you know, an hour before a vote is scheduled. They want to see it. Lawmakers want to see this bill days in advance. So we need to see this bill over the next few days or else chances of a vote on Monday are highly unlikely as well. Multiple lawmakers are also saying that this group is still working on the details of this bill. And the main detail that they can't figure out is how to pay for this $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Well, when I say $1.2 trillion, about 600 billion of that is from previously uh, allocated funds. So they only need about $600 billion. The problem there is, Lawmakers are also going to work on the pay fors for a $3.5 trillion infrastructure package. And so some reports say right now they're getting close, but one economist says if they're getting close, it doesn't mean the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package is getting any closer. That could actually be more difficult depending on what the pay fors are. And another report is indicating that this group of negotiators has a long ways to go. Senator Joe Manchin, who is a Democrat, he said that the group made significant progress today and are close to a final agreement. Well, we also have Republican Senator Mitt Romney from Utah, and when he was asked if this group will have the legislative text by Monday, he said he doesn't anticipate it will be ready by Monday. We have an agreement and a lot of text, but not all of it. It's going to take quite a while to get the full text. It's, it'll be hundreds of pages. So, he says they have a lot of the text, but they won't have it all by Monday. But, will Republicans consider voting on this if the majority of the bill has been written? Well, that's something that we don't know. Hopefully, we'll find out more on that either later tonight, possibly tomorrow, or the next day. As we know more, I promise I will share more. But right now, some are worried, and when I say some, I mean a large uh, percentage are worried that there is no way both infrastructure bills will make their way through the Senate before the August recess. Now, why is this so important? This is so important because, well, first off, we have like two weeks, okay? We have, uh, let's see, August 9th, so we got one, two, about two and a half weeks left. So in two and a half weeks, can Congress or the Senate put this bill together and get both the bipartisan bill for 1.2 trillion and the budget reconciliation bill for 3.5 trillion plus. Could they get both of these passed through the Senate? Right now, the expectation is no, it's not gonna happen. Meaning, we're going to continue to see a push for this uh, all throughout August, all through September as well, until this bill is finalized. What this means for the American people, if you were hoping to see student loan forgiveness included into this bill, first off, just understand, there's a higher chance it gets included because if this bill were to pass, and when I talk about this bill, again, the bipartisan bill is just infrastructure, pure infrastructure, roads, bridges, broadband, ports, things like that. Well, the $3.5 trillion progressive-led infrastructure package, well, that one includes Medicare, free community college. It includes uh, things like elder care, child care, some, some big priorities. We got Bernie Sanders talking about some of these in just a minute. But we also know things like student loan forgiveness. Well, student loans, they are the payment, the, the payment pause on that, that ends in October. So we could see that the timing of this bill passing could actually favor student loan forgiveness. So if you have student loans, you're looking for that forgiveness, well, this could potentially be a good opportunity for you. Regarding the stimulus checks, even though some say it's highly unlikely a stimulus check like we are used to seeing is gonna pass, others say that this is gonna come down to timing and if the economy starts to close. We see businesses close, we see retail stores close, we see restaurants close, people get laid off get displaced from their jobs. Well, what does this mean? We know Congress does not want to extend the unemployment benefits again. That's one thing that we have heard from multiple lawmakers. That's not something that's in the discussion. But stimulus checks could be 
providing more direct payments to the American people could be, depending on how the COVID cases are doing, how the economy is performing, if it's rebounding, right? Or are we taking a step backwards? Are people losing their jobs? Do the American people need some more help? Is the economy struggling? If it is, Congress might step up. So this is what some economists are predicting is that if we see the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package possibly pass in September, that's a higher chance we see stimulus included into that. But just today, Bernie Sanders said that Republicans are getting very nervous. He explains that they are nervous because they know that this is an extremely popular set of proposals that are long overdue. And he also demands that the wealthy and large corporations pay their fair share in taxes and in doing so, it will be done in a progressive way. So this will be a progressive bill. We are going to see progressive priorities. We know there will be at least five that will be included, but stimulus checks is the big one. It is the most popular piece of legislation. And some experts say that if Democrats want to win the House and the Senate and remain in control for the second half of President Biden's term after 2022 elections, then stimulus has to be on their mind because infrastructure will just not cut it. But again, we will see. Bernie Sanders also says Republicans don't want to implement childcare reform to help working class families go from spending 30% or more of their income on childcare to just a 7% max like he's proposing. He also states that Republicans don't want to see the elderly with teeth in their mouth because of the lack of coverage under Medicare. Whether that's true or not, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody would look better with teeth, but uh, maybe that's just me. But he, he is here to change it all is what he's saying. Bernie Sanders says, don't worry, progressives, we got you. We understand what you need. We're going to give you exactly what you need and what you want. Democrats are also worried that the progressive agenda, and this is a big one. This is a bit, little bit of a shift. Democrats are worried that the progressive agenda could easily come forward and cause more moderates to back out of this deal. And here's something that's interesting. If moderates in the Senate, okay, and this is Joe Manchin, Kirsten Cinema, right, people like that, if they think, you know what, we're going a little bit too big, it's a little too much, we cannot afford to pass this, well, what we could see is they could potentially back out of this deal. And if they back out of this deal, experts question if the pay fors for the 3.5 plus trillion dollar infrastructure package would even come close. Some are expecting that no, the pay fors for this bill will not be there. And they say, if not, if we don't come any closer to an agreement, then this will all be the new normal. Lawmakers will continue to negotiate a bill that has a long road ahead. And that's not great news. We know how well they work. We know how quickly they work. And a long road just makes it even that much longer. Now, today, due to the new cases of COVID that we're seeing here in the United States, what we heard is that President Biden has actually split from Canada, the Canada Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and he's extending the border lockdown. Canada actually said that in the middle of August, they would open up their border to vaccinated Americans. However, the United States is not going to do that. They will actually extend the extension uh, all the way to August 21st. This will include non-essential travel to, uh, to anybody on both the Canadian and the Mexican border. So that's actually not great news there, but I wanted to fill you in on that. Uh, and as far as COVID related news, we know that five states are now advising their residents. Canada is one of those states. Nevada is another, uh, you know, two tourist hotspots right now. They're actually advising their residents to continue to wear a mask when indoors. This includes restaurants, stores, and even gatherings when you don't know if everybody from that uh, in that gathering has been vaccinated. We also know some governors are saying that they will reinstate a mask mandate if the numbers continue to tick up. I also mentioned this yesterday where the Illinois governor has, has said that he would continue uh, restrictions or a somewhat of a lockdown if numbers were to continue because they are seeing the surrounding states see higher numbers as well and they do not want to experience that either. And also, this is going to uh, include those that are vaccinated as well. So just because you have a vaccine does not mean you would be exempt from wearing a mask. They say everybody should wear one at this time. So as we get closer to August, 
experts do say masks will be back very soon. So we should expect that. Don't throw them away. Make sure you hold on to them because we're not out of the woods just yet. And according to multiple researchers, the most common symptoms for those that have been vaccinated and have uh, contracted COVID, here's what you need to understand. The headache is the number one symptom. It's headaches followed by runny nose, sneezing, sore throat, and a loss of smell. A loss of smell is not the big one. It is the headache. If you have a headache and it's, it's persistent, it doesn't just come and go. You first, if it's hot here in the here in the northwest, it is fairly hot. It is uh, 86 degrees right now, so it's actually cool, cooled off quite a bit. But it's still fairly hot. Some say drink a lot of water. Okay, do not expose yourself to so much heat and sunlight for a little bit, and maybe your headache will go away. But if you do continue to see that persistent headache, go and get tested because it could be a sign that you have contracted COVID. So. If you guys have any questions on any of this stuff, please, you can always ask your questions down in the comment section below. Can you do me a favor? Also, feel free to hit that thumbs up button and share this video with your friends and family over on Facebook. They too deserve to stay updated as well. But again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.